glad to have a conversation with someone who's truly unique. He has a doctorate in electronic system design, but he has a, an amazing knowledge base in the esoteric or mystical sciences. And I'm really interested in delving into the fount of knowledge that he is and understanding more about the design of being human, but actually the other side of being human, the highest possible self. So uh, I have a ton of questions for him and his name is Dr. Arjun Pai. So with so much personal development content around, you know, we're talking about self-discovery and personal development, with so much of that around, certain phrases have become like cliches in our global culture, you know? Like for example, create your own destiny or um, do what you love and the money will come. But these things like are layered on top of, I would say, a sense of resignation, you know, feeling a little bit resigned. We'd like to be able to, to, to direct our destiny, but f at the same time feeling like we're a little bit bound by fate, you know? And that's, that's when I, I think when people relate to astrology, it's often like, you know, what can you do? <laughs> You're just signed. This is, this is my karma. Yeah, this yeah, this is, where, this is how it is. And so um, knowing how to impact life and serve, like how to impact life to serve you, um, you know, uh, if you don't know how to do that, you'll just end up creating frustration, right? So, um, and even people get depressed, you know, there's also like a whole load of um, new age philosophies that have come out. I don't want to name any particular ones, but there are several that, you know, give people a lot of hope and then leave them feeling extreme, extremely dejected and down because actually they haven't somehow been able to fulfill on the promise of that particular philosophy. So how can you understand your personal astrology and use it to peek into your blind spots and to really move forward in a positive and empowered way? So not so much to, um, to kind of only looking at your future, like what is mm -hmm. going to happen, you know, as a predictive thing but really to use it to unlock the potential that is waiting for you to just tap into. How do you use astrology to do that? See, there was a beautiful thing that, um, you know, K Ken Rao, he mentioned in one of uh, his interviews. He, he, uh, even if he was asked, you know, tell me, why do people go to astrologists? So Ken Rao, for people who don't know him, yeah. is um, like a renowned astrologer. He's really forwarded the science in a in a whole other direction over the last. He's a great researcher, yes, uh, yeah. you know, and he's done a lot of years of research on Jyotish. Yeah. And uh, so Ken Rao mentioned that there are only three reasons why somebody goes to an astrologer. The first reason is uh, fear of your past is these phobias that keep you, you know, is what is my karmas, why am I going through all of this, you know, why do you think I'm, I, uh, why am I suffering? Yes. So the fear that, oh, this might be my not part. So fear of the past. Yes. And curiosity of the future. He says these are the only reasons to an astrologer. Right. And then, I was listening to uh, another discourse by, uh, you know, somebody on television a few years ago and he was talking about Puranas. He says, why do you really worry about the outcome? Why do you think that there's, you know, so many permutations and combinations? Actually, he says, everything is, you can bucket them into only four results or four outcomes. Right. Okay, as per the, the Puranic. Wisdom. He says only there are four outcomes okay. for every event, everything that happens in your life. It can be only four outcomes. What are the four outcomes? One is the result is as per your expectation. Right. Second, it is above your expectation. Right. The third is it's below your expectation. Right. And the fourth is no result. Right. There's no outcome. Right. When can there be a fifth outcome? for any event that you're going through or anything that you're going through. So you have only these four categories, you can bucket them into. Right. So what he says is, why do you really worry? You know, everything is mithya. Mithya means everything is an illusion. It's a maya, which has only four outcomes. Right. 
and when you know what the four outcomes are why do you worry just leave it and just keep doing what well. don't don't put too much of pressure on yourself don't try to anticipate what will happen because anticipation is going to lead you only to four results either you denied of that outcome either it's as per your expectation it's above your expectation or it is below your expectation so he says you know many of us we think of jyotish as a very complex thing if you can simplify it you can actually you know bucket them and say and you can actually be convinced that you know we can get um, you can actually look for look forward for newer experiences right or, or or the other the other another way of looking at this is as well is that when you have the outcomes which are above your expectation or, or meet your expectation you're fine you're fine because okay? that's 50% but it's case. the other two that we have to to deal with so how do you deal with that so i say for me mm-hmm. One of the key things is about learning to trust yourself, to really learning to trust yourself in any situation, so that if things don't go as planned, you know, or according to your liking, um, it, it, the a bit, the kind of just being knowing who you are deeper within, you know, then you begin to play with these uh, things that that are going on around us as as a, as a game. It's just a game we're playing, right? The game of life, so to speak. Sometimes you're going to win, sometimes you're not going to win. You're going to lose. But knowing deep down that you're not the game, you're not the outcomes. You you know, you may choose to enjoy the outcomes, but the moment you you think that you 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 know that outcome really is going to make a difference to who you are, then at that point we're in trouble. So really getting that actually is just a play. Like, you know, what does it matter if you if you if it doesn't go in that direction, change the direction. Exactly. Or change uh the perception yeah or entry robins yeah, i don't know there's a thing that he says you know uh you're not a tree he says move yes <laughs> <laughs> otherwise you get rooted yeah. <laughs> so you're not a tree move, move. Yeah. <laughs> go think, somewhere else do something else exactly i think uh, many of us we really fear about uh because of the past fears and past experiences there's so much you know, so much uh impact that we had and that's where jyotish tells you you know shani shani is about patience perseverance structure organizing yes it's about developing solid, solid structure, structure foundations. foundations yeah and that's sometimes doesn't come very naturally you have to go through yeah. the process yeah and it's work it, yes <laughs> it's work and so when people say parishram karna padega mm. then this go oh lekin parishram karna padega so this is a great thing great thing exactly. like i'm i can create something what do i need to learn and often like you know if i don't know how to do something where can i go to to learn it or who can i bring in that knows how to do this thing so that they can you know we can create a team and and, and put something together that is lasting he wants you to create something that is solid right and so this way yoga and i think you know yoga is a really amazing discipline because it really teaches you to get, at the very least get up early in the morning and get on your mat yeah you know and actually do something you know that kind of effort and and so um often when when uh, astrologers are talking about effort they 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 say say it in a negative way it's like mm. oh yes it will be hard work i'm like yeah but why should you be afraid of of that hard work is that I mean it's not hard work until you say it's hard it's just work it's just what you have to do anyway you have to do something with your time don't you exactly so i think you know, this is this is a predetermination or you know thinking that you know everything is predetermined you know it's fated yeah i think sometimes we really take uh, jyotish um and think that you know why should i really work because everything is fated if i have to become rich i'll become rich by just sitting at home yes you're never going to become rich or you're never going to achieve whatever you want to do yes but you need to put in an effort i think that's where uh, i'll tell you one another thing smita ji what i really whenever you go to an astrologer nobody asks them tough questions you know they will always ask there are questions around when will i get a job when will i get married when will i have children uh when will i go abroad when will i become famous when will i become famous <laughs> you know when will i become a millionaire millionaire <laughs> so all these things are bucketed but you never ask them go to an astrologer and if you're paying him ask him tell me what my karmas are and how 
can become a better human being. Tell me what grahas are stopping me from becoming a better human being. I think those questions nobody asks because they think it's not worth it. Time and work the effort. No, I, but I think I think well, yeah, it's because we. I, I I would say you know very often there is this this uh, get quick rich type of thing. I want the answers without doing. I want that thing that I want without actually working towards doing the work that it takes to become worthy of that thing. You know, and I don't mean worthy that you're not deserving, but I mean you know in order to wear, for example, a certain. Um, quality of a relationship you have to become a certain you have to behave in a certain way you have to learn you know certain skills you have to, to operate in a in a certain way you have to develop yourself so those types of things it would be kind of a short circuit that just give me the answer when is that going to happen so that's that's you know that's an easy buck for an astrologer in a sense yeah. and it's like you go to an astrologer and you ask uh, God, you know, God, give me patience, but give it to me now. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know you, yeah, I heard you talk. I, I'm really interested in, in uh, understanding our swabhav, you know, because if you can understand who we are deeply in, in our own humanity, um, the, the higher elements of who we are become more available once we can navigate our way with our own humanity, our own nature. And I know that... Um, uh, I've heard you talk about the four Purusharths. Mm. You know, can you talk about what the, what is a Purusharth and what the four Purusharths are and how they lend themselves to understanding ourselves better? So the four Purusharths, or what we call them as Chatur Varnas, okay, uh, they are nothing but what we spoke about earlier. It's Dharma, Artha, Kama, and Moksha. Okay. These are the Purusharths. Um, and like we discussed before, it's dharma. When you say dharma, as we said, you know, there are various interpretations of dharma. You know, some people say, what is the purpose? Or what is, what is that you need to act upon? Then artha is all we, we already said, you know, it's about uh, your security. Whatever gives you security, whatever gives you peace of mind. And this is something I always, uh, even in... Uh, even in my app that we have Cosmic Insights, this is something that I've uh, asked some of the people who are, who are using this app. One of the techniques that you can use to really go and connect with yourself is, uh, astrologically, whenever your ascendant is transiting your um, you know, mid-heaven, which is your 10th house, that's the best time for you to connect. Really? To, with, your, uh, with your inner self. You can go into very deep meditations when your, your ascendant is, because that's your 10th house, because that's your crown chakra. Right. Your ascendant is your crown chakra. Ah. And the second thing what you could do, I always tell people, is during the hora. hora so, is, so, so wait, let me understand what you just said. So um, to, to, to meditate when the ascendant is, tra is, is going, uh, when a planet is going over your ascendant. No. When the ascendant, because... It's it, going over your 10th house. Yeah. Okay. Because uh, you, you can use my app and you can, you can there's a, a thing which is free. You can, the app is free for download. Yes. If you want to use, uh, you know, premium services, they're premium services. Yes. But there's uh, also a transit chart, yeah. which is free. You can use that chart and you can see every day the, the ascendant has to go through your 10th house. Okay. Your 10th house is your, your head, your ch chakra and right. your 4th house is your feet. Okay, yes. Okay, those are the energy points. So whenever your ascendant moves, it's the best time to connect with your yourself, your inner self. Right. And that's why you say, uh, you know, whenever you meditate during an eclipse, that's the most powerful meditation. Why? What is happening is all three celestial objects are aligned in a single line. Wow. And when you sit for meditation, it's like aligning all your chakras. Mm. Because all the celestial, you have the earth, you have the sun and the moon. All of them are aligned. Mm. That's the best time for going into deep, deep meditation. Wow, okay, amazing. And, and the second thing what you can also do for people who want to, you know, when you talk about all of these is, if you have to really realize what is deep inside you and you want to bring that out and make you feel the ultimate bliss, is whenever the hora, hora is the heart, okay, you can, and there is, a, in the app, Cosmic Insights, you can always go and check the hora, for the entire day. Yes. 
so when the r of your uh, of your uh, lagna or your ascendant the time you were born yeah ascendant so suppose you you're born in aries so mars okay is the lord of your ascendant yes of that so whenever the mars aura is operating yeah go to a mirror and give the most beautiful smile that you can give because you are looking at yourself and you are actually filling yourself with so much of positive energies okay that's the best way to really relieve yourself give the the best smile you can give right because what are the secrets you got oh there's so many you know, <laughs> you can, so you can talk about these secrets of and all these are easy things that you can do and not go to an astrology because it's all about inner manufacturing or inner engineering yes you know? how you can you can connect with your inner self yes and everything is about you you know aham brahmasmi mm-hmm. aham brahmasmi yeah who am i yes so i think all so the rishis hum. so <laughs> i am that yes so i think it's all about you and when the lagna is lagna is always important yeah and there's another technique that i've seen which works very brilliantly that uh, i've i've read it from uh, you know Johnny Petrie's book uh and how, if i recollect i think it's how to make money through jyotish or ah, how to yes. make money through astrology yes and this works brilliantly yeah okay. so what she says is whenever your ascendant okay is transiting for the day put the venus the the transiting venus with the ascendant put it in the trine or the jupiter an exact degree and that's the time that your bhagya is going to unlock or your greatest fortunes are going to unlock so if you want to buy a lottery or if you, if you want to speculate if you want to buy shares or you want to invest in something that would be a good time to do it investment you want to uh, you know you want to do a spiritual or a charity a donation whatever you want to do okay it really gives you the the merits of that right planet. because there are two planets which are called as uh, you know brahmanic planets which is venus guru shukracharya and brahaspati guru brahaspati mm-hmm. both of them are uh, you know brahmins priests right and whenever and both of them are supposed to be very very generous so whenever you put your lagna because every day you would have your lagna actually trine trine as 159 so either it's conjoined or it's in the fifth house degreeply yeah so suppose let's give an example for all your viewers if your uh, let's say your uh, jupiter is transiting let's say jupiter is transiting uh, currently now maybe 19 degrees of virgo right yes whenever in the day your ascendant is um, at uh, capricorn 19 degrees that's a trine or when it is at 19 degrees in virgo yes or it is in 19 degrees of taurus yes that's the time so you get three periods in a day what happens if you've got a really trashed venus does but it's or or, or or jupiter would it still work it will still work because that time okay then see i would still say um it depends on what your you know how powerful your chart is based on your dashas mahadashas and antardashas what are operating that is definitely there you know uh, but i would still say those times are much better to give you uh, better results than any other times right. so if you have a choice to do uh, your errands time you choose these times why is it then some people are so much better at making money than other people it's about see this is a mindset poverty i think is a mindset you're poor because your mind wants to be poor true that some people like for example let's say bill gates he doesn't think consciously about making money, money. i mean he he some people have an inherent maybe it's something they bring with them maybe it's some some unlocking of some fruits of some previous actions i don't know what what do what do you say about that see uh, the thing is you need to make yourself a magnet for attracting money sure okay how do you make that is one of the things that i learned um, very early in life 
is there is something called as green revolution. This is the easiest way you can attract more money. What is that? Green, green revolution. Uh, um, uh, green revolution. Green revolution. Okay, this is my terminology. So what is green cycle or green? Green is the color of money. Yeah. So the more you give money out at a particular time, at a particular nakshatras are operating, then you attract more money. So which which nakshatras? Nakshatras like Punarvasu. Punarvasu means light again. And so when are they operating? Meaning they are when the, when the moon is moon transiting. Is yes. Okay. When the moon is transiting, this the the specific nakshatra point. Right. Then it gives you, and the same things. You know, if you're you, if you're trying to apply for a competitive examination. Yeah. Then you might choose uh, Uttara Shara nakshatra. Okay. You want to administer uh, medicines so yeah. that you're quickly healed. Then you would want to take uh, one of those Shipra nakshatra. Shipra is quick results. Ashwini nakshatra gives you very quick results. Okay. Pusha nakshatra is very nourishing and gives you very quick results. Mm. And Hasta nakshatra gives you good, good results. So, and all these things have been, it's there in my app, which is freely available. So if you are saying, I want to sign a contract and I want to be more aligned with the, uh, with the energies of the cosmos, you know, be attuned with them. It doesn't mean to say that, you know, um, there, would, there are better chances of you succeeding mm -hmm. during those time periods, but it doesn't, give you, it doesn't guarantee you that it's going to give you success all the time. But these are, you know, your chances of getting better results are when you align yourself with the, with the, the cosmic core. Wow. You know what? I'm, we're going to do another session yes. on secrets. We'll definitely Secrets for making money. Secrets, secrets for succeeding in, in, in um, challenges. We'll do all of, I think we, we can do little sessions on, on these different things. Cause definitely. Now, is there anything, I mean, I have a lot of questions for you. I think we need to kind of probably yeah. bring it to a clo close now. But is there anything that you really want to share with uh, the Self-Discovery Channel viewers that you think that, that would really make a difference to their journey in, you know, in um, bringing success in different areas of their life. See, this is something that I want, uh, and this is my example I give in all my, you know, classroom sessions and discussions that I do. This is my initial thing is firstly, you need to understand, uh, you know, the symbols and what nature is trying to communicate to you. Right. We have completely disconnected from Mother Earth and nature, you know, that we are not able to sense what, you know, nature wants to tell or communicate to us. Yeah. We are losing, um, we are not grounded. I think that's very, very important to ground yourself. Ground your energies, ground your nerves, okay? And symbology has a very important role to play in our lives. You know, if there are circles, I was reading your book, you talked about, you know, uh, uh, mandalas and uh, yantras and all of these. These are sacred geometries or symbols. But beyond that, what uh, our ancients have done, they've simplified that and they've given to us in the form of... Uh, you know, uh, devatas. Now, what are devatas? Again, there is, if, if you can interpret, for uh, example, let's say, who lives in Kailash? The Shiva and his family. Shiva and his family. And who is his family? Shiva, Parvati, Kartikeya, Kartikeya Ganesh. and Ganesh. Now, look at the family, okay? Now, who is the, 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 what is the mount of Shiva, mount or the vehicle of Shiva, or what is his, you know, the, the, the Nandi? animal? Nandi, you mean Nandi? Nandi, Nandi mm -hmm. is the bull, mm -hmm. right? What is the mount of Parvati? Nandi? It's the tiger or oh, it's oh, a lion. Oh, you mean her, her vehicle? Vehicle, yeah. vehicle or her mount. Yeah. It's either the tiger yeah. or sometimes she's depicted sitting yeah, on a lion. Yeah. Yeah. That's why she's called Shirovali Mata. Mm. She, okay? Do you think... In a natural environment, the bull and the lion or the tiger get along? Right. Of course not. not. No. no. One will eat the other, yeah. Yes. Then, you see what is called around the neck of uh, Shiva. The serpent. It's a serpent. And what is the vehicle or the mount of Lord Ganesh? The rat. 
Do you think the snake and the rat get along? Yeah, well, the snake loves a, a rat or two yes. now and then, yeah. Yes. And the same snake, and what is the amount of Kartik here, or the, the vehicle of Kartik here? Peacock, isn't it? It's a peacock. Yeah. Do you think the peacock and the serpents get along in nature? Mm. They don't. Now, this is a very important message I want to give. When you look at this family sitting on Kailash, it's basically saying we have differences of opinion with our, uh, with, uh, you know, with, with our spouses, uh, you know, with our children, with our mother, with our father. The differences always are going to be there. But still reconciling to all these differences and leaving in the same on the Mount of Kailash. This is the highest peak. Kailash is where he resides. And that's about your highest consciousness. At the highest consciousness, you have to let go. You have to forgive. And that's when you make your life Kailash. Right. So we have to understand the symbology, the meaning, each of this. So when we pray to this family, we are actually trying to invoke, imbibe these qualities. Doesn't mean that we, and that's what Ganesh is about. He's about removal of obstacles. Because if you see the elephant, you know, runs amok in the forest, it can pull down anything which comes in its path. It's never going to change its path. If there's a tree which comes, it's going to pull down the tree. And that's what we're trying to invoke in us because we, our DNA also has certain uh, you know, similarities with um, the elephant. We, we say we cannot get rid of obstacles in our life, but we should be able to overcome those obstacles by pulling them down. That's what we're trying to do by praying to Lord Ganesh. Yes. So I want to share, uh, you know, this is the last message, is about forgiving and forgetting. And uh, I know you have a great technique that I want you to share with all your viewers, is how we can, you know, forgive. Um, you know, there is a technique that you told me. I did, but we talk about that another time. Another time, okay. <laughs> great. It's going to go on a little bit long, but no, we should talk about that in a, in a different context. I think it's really, yeah, really useful. But um, I want to say thank you so much. You know, I, I have a pile of questions more, and frankly, I could carry on. But I'm a little bit concerned for the crew over there because <laughs> they, might, they might need to have a break. Yeah. So I, and for yourself, you know, but thank you so much. This is just amazing. I really, really um, appreciate taking the time. You know, you, I know you teach um, about nakshatras and a whole range of other things. How can people find you? Where can they find you? And maybe say a little bit about what you do teach. Yeah. So uh, the couple of things that we're doing, we're teaching uh, courses on nakshatras. Uh, we're teaching courses on grahas now. Uh, you can, every people can go and, uh, and we also have uh, a brilliant course on Krishnamurti Padati that we're teaching. It's again about timing of events based on a unique system, based on nakshatras again. Uh, people, if they want to go and study, they can go and uh, register for our courses on our website, which is www.cosmicinsightshop.com. Okay. Or cosmicinsightshop.com. Or cosmicinsights.net. Cosmicinsights.net. You can find him there. Awesome. Thank you very much for you know having me on your uh, channel, Self Discovery Channel. So, this is our pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.